everyone, thanks for tuning in to the first episode of our series on molecular gastronomy, where we're bringing science to the everyday kitchen. Today we'll be covering the technique of spherification, where we take liquids and encapsulate them into spheres that visually and texturally resemble caviar. These can be found served from five-star restaurants to frozen yogurt shops, and when you put them in your mouth, they burst with an explosion of flavor. To try out spherification in your own home, you'll need two basic ingredients. The first is your gel agent, which is sodium alginate. Sodium alginate is actually a natural product extracted from seaweed and is found as a thickening agent in a lot of food products. The second ingredient you'll need is calcium. The calcium can either be found naturally in your ingredient or it can be added artificially using calcium chloride or calcium lactate. All of these ingredients can be purchased online. So the science behind this process is that in the presence of calcium, the sodium alginate will form a gel. The sodium alginate are these long chain polymers, each bound to a positively charged sodium. When a calcium 2 plus ion comes in, it actually displaces the sodium ions and grabs onto two alginate chains and crosslinks them. As this crosslinking occurs, a gel forms. There are two basic techniques of spherification basic and reverse. With basic spherification, you're adding your sodium alginate, which is the, again the gelling agent, to your ingredient. And then that alginated solution is added dropwise to a calcium bath. With the reverse spherification, your ingredient will contain the calcium and then that is added to an alginate bath. There are pros and cons to both techniques. With basic spherification, the process is quite easy and then the membrane is thin and almost imperceptible in your mouth. However, this technique will not work with products that already contain calcium, such as dairy products. With reverse spherification, you can use many different types of ingredients, and the gel will actually encapsulate the liquid for longer because the alginate is not incorporated into your liquid. So these can be actually prepared days in advance. However, they do have a thicker membrane, and it takes a bit of a longer process. So today, we'll be covering basic spherification. I thought it would be fun for us to try and make some reverse root beer floats where we take root beer and encapsulate them into spheres and then serve them onto vanilla ice cream. So the first step is to measure out our root beer. You'll need roughly 1% solution of the alginate to your main ingredient, or 1 gram of alginate for every 100 milliliters of your ingredient. So here I'll be taking 150 milliliters of my root beer and 1.5 grams of the sodium alginate. You might find that the alginate is quite difficult to incorporate into your solution, so I found the best method is to use a hand blender like this. If you find that it's still quite difficult to incorporate, you can bring the solution to a boil and that should help the alginate dissolve in your solution. If the ingredient that you are using is thicker, such as a fruit puree or a syrup, you can uh, add some deionized water to it to first dilute it. It's best to use deionized water because tap water might already contain calcium ions which will interfere with your jelly process. You might find that this process takes roughly 5 to 10 minutes, so be patient. Once your alginate is fully incorporated, take a small strainer and strain the solution through. So allow your solution to rest for a minimum of one hour in the refrigerator. And this will help all the air bubbles escape, which will help make nicer looking spheres. Meanwhile, we can make our calcium chloride bath. You probably want to make a 0.5 to 1% solution. So that's roughly five grams of calcium chloride to every liter of water. It's best to have your calcium chloride bath be in a flat bottom bowl like this so that when you drop your spheres in, the gels won't stick together. It's good to also have another bowl of water next to you so you can rinse the spheres once they're ready. So now that our alginate solution has been sitting in the fridge for an hour, we can start with our spherification process. So if you want to make smaller spheres like caviar, it's best to use a syringe like this. These can be purchased in your local pharmacy or in a specialty food store. If you want to make larger spheres, then you can use a measuring spoon and then carefully deposit your alternate solution into the calcium bath. Today I think I'll make some root beer caviar. So leave the tip of your syringe just above your calcium bath and then slowly drop it in, dropwise. Try to space them a little bit apart so again they won't stick to one another. Wait a few seconds for the gelling process to take place, and now you can scoop them out with a small strainer. Take them out, rinse them a little bit in your bowl of water, pat them dry, and enjoy! A little imagination and a lot of fun can make some really interesting recipes. How about some balsamic vinegar pearls with olive oil and pastinis, or chocolate milk balls on ice cream? Anyways, that's all the time we have for today. Thanks for watching, and I hope you tune in next time.